Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's now, today is the 26th, February 2024. I'm with two illustrious Dominican educators, one of whom was my high school principal for a period, uh, Mr. Uh, McDonald Alexander, who was a chemistry teacher at the Dominican Grammar School, and his uh, beautiful wife, uh, Esther Alexander, who was also an educator. Of course, she did not teach me, so I can't give you much detail. But I'm going to ask them a few questions about their uh, background, their lives, where they went to school, their contributions to society in a way that can be of use to future generations in recalling that time before World War II and during that period after the war when Dominicans became better educated, were able to go to university and college and to create, a, of course, a, a generation, bring to life a generation of, of Dominican students who themselves excelled at universities all across the world. So. Welcome, uh, 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 I'm Principal, my old headmaster, as we used to say. Mr. McDonald, good evening, sir. How are you? I'm okay so far, hanging in there. <laughs> well, you look wonderful. And um, Mrs. Alexander, how are you, ma'am? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Well, let's say, you know, we, we'll we say ladies first. So, um, Ms. Alexander, give us your full name kindly. Esther Bruni Alexander. And... Uh, where were you born and when were you born? I was born in Dailies, date of birth, July 18th, 1948. Outstanding. And who are your parents? My parents were Justin Bruni and Ostania Lawrence. Okay. And what did your parents do? My father worked at the oil refinery in Curacao during the time I was born. Mm -hmm. Before that, he was a teacher in La Plaine. Mm -hmm before migrating to Curacao. Okay, so your father worked in the oil refinery in Curacao? Yes. So he was one of the many hundreds of Dominicans who traveled to Curacao to work in the oil business? Yes. So he left you behind? I, When he left, I wasn't born yet. I but see. But I was conceived in Curacao. <laughs> so you were conceived in Curacao, but born yes. in Dominica? Yes. <laughs> Interesting. You know, my co-author on many projects... Uh, Justice uh, Judge Levin Andre in Canada. He was born in Curacao because his father and mother had gone there as well during the war. Right. Like uh, other Dominicans like Ophelia Olivace. Okay, well, that's a, a good way. And what about siblings? How many brothers and sisters did you have? Oh, well, I have been blessed with seven brothers and seven sisters. Because so you're my... talking about 14 and one, that's 15. Yes, because my after I was born, maybe about two years after I was born, my father got married to somebody else. My mother got married to somebody else. And they both had many kids. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so I, I will ask, I, I will stop for, for this moment and go on to your husband, your uh, equally illustrious husband, Mr. McDonald Benjamin. Mr. Benjamin, uh, Mr. Alexander, rather, when were you born and where were you born? I was born in 1939 at Grand Bay. Okay. And then, of course, we moved to La Plaine. Okay. Who are, you, who are your parents? My pa my parents were Twitter Alexander. He was the pharmacist, the chief pharmacist on the island. What was island. his first name? He is Tyrell Alexander. Tyrell Alexander. How do you spell Tyrell? T-Y-R-E-L-L. -L. Tyrell Alexander. So he pharmacy. was chief pharmacist. Yeah, chief pharmacist at the hospital. So you said to me that your interest in chemistry uh, go, goes back quite a long ways. Yeah, and my mother was a nurse. A nurse at the hospital also. Interesting. So a medical parents. Yeah, <laughs> so you came from a home that was steeped in science. Yep. Yes, indeed. What was it like? Uh, well, how old were you when you left Grand Bay? Do you remember? I came out to know, but... A little boy, I came over, him. I really can't remember, to be honest. But I'm um, from Grand Bay, then I went to Roseau, Roseau McSchool. And, and then after that, I went to grammar school in 57, um, 52, 57 grammar school. Okay, so you, you started grammar school at what age? Um, Probably 13, those days, you had to call the 12 plus exam, right? We had before. 
So we have a label 13, 14, roughly 15, you know, roughly. Okay. And you went to you went to grammar school from first form through sixth form? Yes. Hmm. No, yes, first form to sixth form. But when I when we got into the sixth form, there wasn't anybody to do this A level sciences and, and, and such, you know. So I left grammar school with GCU level, right? After I did my GCU level, then what were I the had four levels you took? English, Latin, history, chemistry, maths, physics, geography, and so on. I can't even remember yet. Who are the who are the science teachers of your day? Science teachers? Yes, sir. Okay. This guy called Mr. Um Ronald Pickett was from Barbados. He was a physics guy. And um who it? Victor Archer was chemistry, of course. And um he's the main people, you know. Yeah. Victor Archer was a solution. He from yeah, from Lucia. And he had attended McGill University, he done a master's, I think, in botany and chemistry at McGill. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, correct. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. And Pickett. Pickett was a Barbadian, but where did Pickett study? Do you know? Pickett was physics. Okay. Do you know where he had gone to school in England or Canada? Pickett, I wasn't sure. I think he went to UE. Okay. Okay. Because UE would have just been founded in 48. Was that? UE was founded in 48. Would he have gone to UE already? UE? Yeah. No, UE was, UE was done before that time, you know. I think I'm... Um, yeah, UE was a branch of London University. Yes. Then it sprung about, yeah, roughly. About that time, roughly. Mm. Yeah, okay. Well, tell me, did you have any siblings, any brothers and sisters? Three brothers and two sisters. One brother, Philip, was a, was a deputy principal at grammar school. Philip yeah. did a bachelor's degree in botany, chemistry, bot botany, zoo, and chemistry. At UB, and then he came to grammar school. He worked there for a few years, teaching O and A level, and then he went to UE, did a degree in um, agriculture. He went to McGill and did a master's in entomology and so on. And he was a social scientist, a social scientist, speciality. Yeah. From McGill, he came after and many. That's McGill in Montreal, Canada. Yes. Then he worked in Canada for the government as a research scientist. And then, of course, he came to Dominica later on to Archibald Plantations, where he, where he did tropical agriculture. He was the head of the school there, you know? Yes. At, at, at Archibald. Spring, spring. Uh, Archibald uh, Plantation, I think, was being run under the auspices of Clemson University, I believe. That's, that's correct. Yes. Thank you. He was the guy I, in charge, you know? He died of a heart attack. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. When did that happen? Do you remember? Uh, that happened about almost over, over 20 years ago, about 30 years ago. About okay. that. So he was a relatively young man at that time, maybe in his 50s. Yeah, he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't very young. Very young. Yes, what about you in your... So you just had one brother? The other brother was Albert Alexander. He was a government statistician. They call him... Yeah, the government said it's a said it's six. He did died. You, did you study at UE as well? He died. Is, and is my he, sister. Is he with us? My sister, two sisters. One was a nurse. She was in England. And she came back in, in Dominican after a while she died. What was her name? Andrea. Andrea Alexander. Yes. Were, were they both nurses? Huh? Were both your sisters nurses? No. The other one went to Canada and she worked in the social sciences, you know? I see. I see. Mm. Yes, yes, indeed. So you had two brothers, you had you had two brothers and two sisters. Yes. So five of you. Mm -hmm. Did <laughs> Albert did Albert also go to university? Yeah, Albert went to UWI. He didn't finish his degree and he came back, you know. So yeah. He was he didn't finish, get back at home instead, right? To come to his studies. Yes, sir. Mm. Is Albert still with us or no? Albert is dead. I'm the oh. only one, I'm the only survivor. 
All are dead. Well, well, God kept you here so we can do this interview. And so you can give, <laughs> I yeah, believe you. <laughs> indeed, so we can give life to those siblings and your parents. Yeah. On. When you say you, you mean the University of the West Indies, which at that yes. time, well, when you were in high school, was in at Mona, but later on, they opened campuses in Barbados at Cave Hill and Trinidad at uh, St. Augustine. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I went to the Cave Hill campus. Yes, indeed. And, Let me and, ask um, you, what was life like at the grammar school in the 1950s when you attended? It is very pleasant one, but very, very strict. For example, Victor Archer was very in control of not only grammar school, or, or, but of this society. If you did anything, people say, Moke di Ah, I see. So, you, so you're, you're saying that he, he controlled not only the school, but the society. But he, yes, people said, would say, Moke di Moshe Archer. And Archer would Can you say that in English for people who do not understand French Creole? Yeah, French Creole, but others, anybody in English also would say, I'll inform Mr. Archer about your behavior. And then they would tell him, and he'd call you to his office and tell you, I heard you must behave in. You see? And and what would, what would happen as a result of that conversation? Huh? Would that, would that be all he would say? Is there anything else you would do? He'd call you and he would actually warn you. And for, if, and sometimes, you know, if the, woman, if the person making the complaint said, you should be caned, he would cane you. I see. What did he cane? <laughs> what did he cane you with? A time and whip. Time and whip. Yeah. W was that a whip that was lying about there for that purpose, or would he send someone to get it? He had a guy called John who was the messenger. You tell John, get me some time and whips, and John would get time and whips and put it in his office. I see. I see. And uh, that was used for caning. When one breaks up, another one. To be used. Yes, I see. <laughs> so you're saying that corporal discipline was very much used at the grammar school in those days? Definitely. Were you Definitely. were you a member of any clubs at the grammar school? Yes, we had a science club. And um, it didn't look at too well. But later on, when I got my degree in 71, and I came back, I was a graduate teacher. I had a science club. And in that science club, I taught guys how to make electric motors and fans and, and so on. I can remember very well, the, mem the school boys were a guy called Fraser and um, Mikey you Bruni. Fraser Jones. Yes. Then uh, Mikey Bruni and a few other boys who all became engineers after that. Most of them. What about, what about uh, Lawson Christian? Do you remember one by the name of Lawson Christian? Oh, yes. I know that very well. I taught Lawson. He was one of my classes. What kind of student was Lawson? Yeah? What kind of student was he? Lawson was a good guy. And he, if Lawson didn't understand, he would talk. So I don't understand, you know, sir. And he would go home without sending me. He didn't understand. In the classroom, Lawson would remain silent. He'd tell you straight. Second, sir, second line of the equation, I don't understand, you know. I'll go back to the equation. <laughs> and she my life. Oh, yeah, I could continue. <laughs> I have permission to continue. Okay. Let me go ahead and ask Miss Alexander now a few questions, and we'll come back to you. When we come back to you, you'll tell us, tell us about your early life in um, uh, La Plaine and how you got to the grammar school and the society at the time. Miss Alexander, are you ready to, to come on? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, let's continue. When she gets back on, we'll just continue. Tell me yes. about uh, life in La Plaine in the 1940s and 50s. Okay. In La Plaine, La Plaine was a very small village. And at that time, the principal, the two principals, one was a guy called Mr. Benjamin, and then Mr. Christian. Ms. I can remember a lot more about Mr. Christian because... He was a musician and being a member of my family, he had a lot of village control and he did a lot of things to enhance the village's um, progress. For example, he had a thing called 
food and fitness family, where everybody was encouraged to plant the provisions, you know? And then he had the choir in the night. Maybe we could go and sing, you know? Various homes, you know? He rung it out, he rung it out. People in the village, and we'd go and sing, you know, home to home on many occasions. That would be during the Christmas season? Season, and then not only that, during not before the before the Christmas season, we have occasions for people to go and do something. We say, let's have the choir. So he had a little choir in that plane, you know, we just sing and at, at Christmas season, more prominent, you know. Mm. But before what, he what had instrument the, did he play, Mr. Christian? Violin. Okay, and you're talking about Henkel locking back Christian. Henkel, yes. Yes, indeed. So what how did the people in Laplane regard him? Oh boy, as a as a great guy, as a father man, these guys had, you know, he, he, he had a interest in promoting culture, progress, and community development. And people like him for that, you know. Yes. Like on a Sunday, after mass, you come to my home with my father, you have the drinks and so on, and talk and, you know what I mean? The, a little boy, or, or they say, I didn't listen to them, but the, you know, all the, the big guys come and talk. The Brunies, Jones, La Plaine, all these prominent guys, you know, come yes. and talk under the reputation of Mr. Christian. Mm -hmm. Any home, I see them and talk. So so let me ask you this. In, prep, in preparing you for high school education, what role, if any, did he did Henkel Christian play in your education? Okay. Mr. Henkel Christian was a guy very thorough in grammar, English. He was very, you know, he, he didn't like broken English at all. Like my very right. Okay. Very strict on grammatical structure. And that was what I remembered him for, you know. Mm. Definitely. Well, let me ask Miss Alexander, who's come on the line now. Miss Alexander, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, but I can't see you. What happened is that, and I'll see. I'm going to ask you about your time in La Plaine as a child growing up and your education. Yes. I. Uh, can you, uh, I'll begin. As I said, I was born in Dailies and I went to school there up to um, seven standard. The, I sat this school living um, exam at the time. I was successful and then I went to live in La Plaine with my dad. And there I started teaching at the age of 15. Okay. On, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to go to high school. I see. So a lot of my, while teaching, I learned a lot on my own. Okay. Let me ask you this. Is there any way you can put on your video? Let me see. I'm on. While you're looking to do that, let me ask Mr. Alexander. Let me go to Mr. Alexander's room. Okay, that's fine. Ms. Alexander, while she's coming to you, um, tell me how you got to go to the grammar school. Okay. Um, Yo, by the way, hold on for a second. Your wife is going to come sit next to you. So make right. a little space for her so I can see her face I'll as well. Good. I'll be good. I'll, I'll... Good. Okay. Can you see me? I can see you. Okay, so I will talk to you now, and then I'll go back to him when you're done. So okay. you're saying you you taught school from what age? Fifteen. <laughs> okay. And uh, what was life like in La Plaine in those days? Well, I was young. It was a lot of fun. We had um you again, Mister Alec, Mister Christian. He he organized um. A youth, we had a youth club, which I was once the president, another time secretary, another time. I always, always had a role in, in, in the youth club. I liked, I, that's something I like. Okay. Social work. What were the activities you guys engaged in? 
we engaged in, we had our, meet, our monthly, either monthly or, or every, we had meetings, I don't know if it was bi-weekly, um, twice a month or once a month, I cannot remember. There we learned, um, we had cooking classes from Tong. Okay. We played rounders. We learned about how to keep meetings and robot rules of orders and things like that. <laughs> this is a, this is fantastic because I once spoke to a gentleman not too long ago and he said to me, they told a young person in Dominica recently to move a vote of thanks and they didn't know what they meant. Right. So we learned, we learned all those things um, during the, you know, our early years as members of um, youth groups. And um, later later on, Mr. Christian organized, we used to call it, I think it was Youth Leadership Training Camp. Oh. So the president, secretary, treasurer from every or most groups around the island would meet for about a week. I remember we met at the Roseau, I we met at Collie Hose, um, elementary school. The school was newly built. So we were there for a week and we, I mean, it was very educational. And so fun. you would camp there? Yes. It was called the Youth Leadership Training Camp. Wow. Youth yes. Leadership right. Training Camp. And now we're talking about the 1960s or 50s? 1960s. Okay. 1960s. Because I started teaching in 64, so it was really in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. At that time, was Mr. Um, Christian still a head teacher or was he now? No, no, he was in social worker. He was um social services. Mm -hmm. Is he a director of social welfare? I don't know if he was the director, but I know he was in social services. And mm -hmm. would he drive that uh, Volkswagen or did he have another car? Was it the um, other car that he had, the uh, Minx? I cannot remember, honestly. It's one of the two that it makes on the social yeah. Volkswagen. <laughs> Let me ask you about Laplane in those days. How did you earn, how did your parents earn their living? My dad worked as a, an inspector in the, in the banana industry. And his wife was a, she was a housewife. I see, I see. And how many of the siblings of the 15, how many of them stayed with you? Well, um, seven of them. I don't know if you know Bill Bruni and Tom Bruni, they're my brothers. Of course I know Bill and Tom. Yes, yes um, Bill and one, Tom are my brothers. I think Tom Bruni, one of them worked with, one of them was an accountant in England. Oh, no, no, that was Reginald Bruni. That's our cousin. Okay. Because yeah. he taught at the grammar school with me after I right. graduated. But I know yeah. Tom. Tom was in school with my brother Lawson. Okay. And Bill went, to the, Bill went to St. Mary's Academy. And Tom yeah. went to the grammar school. I knew Tom at the grammar school. Right. And of course, I knew Mikey Bruni and, and right. I knew all Dave and all these guys. Yes. Right. Dave, Mikey, George, uh, all these are my cousins. Yeah. George is a physician in the Bahamas. I met him there some time ago. Yes. Uh -huh. Let me ask you this. What, as far as culture was concerned, what were the cultural events that took place in La Plaine during your childhood? I remember... Um, we used to have, well, every year they had that food for family fitness, I think, and they would have they would have an exhibition of the best, the biggest um produce. Ladies would do hand would be preparing for the whole year to bring about their handcraft. And um they would bring livestock. So you're talking about the best pig, the best cow, the best sheep, right, the best goat. Right, right. So you had a village fair. Yes, we had a village fair. Do you that know, was... I remember going to one of those village fairs in the 19, early 1970s, you know. Okay, good. Yes, yes. Yeah. And you'd have the biggest pumpkin, the biggest bunch of bananas. Everything. And there was even, I do not know if they did it every year, but I can remember there was a year whether where they they went around and um people who wanted to exhibit their yard for the best flower garden and the well kept surrounding i don't know if that was on a continuous basis but i remember it once and it was really nice people would ladies i mean at that time there was very little work so the 
lady young people who were not at school and there was no work for them to do. They would take pride in their beautiful vegetable gardens and their beautiful flower gardens, you know. Interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. And where would you buy your 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 clothing and your shoes and things like that? Oh, clothing and shoes was in Roseau. Yes. How often would you go to Roseau? Well, as a teacher, we went once a month <laughs> to get our little paycheck and to shop. <laughs> How much were you paid in those days per month? I, when I started working, it was $48. 48 dollars. That was my first paycheck. You were pupil teacher one, and you get $48. When you pass your exam and you're pupil teacher two, you got $52 a month. And maybe I think when you are pupil teacher three, you get $60. Amazing. <laughs> and you started teaching in 64? Yes. Amazing. Uh, that's That's interesting. Um, and after after teaching for many years, the, the teachers' training college came into being. So I attended the teachers' training college. What year did you graduate? Seventy seven or seventy eight, one of them, maybe seventy eight. So you would have been in one of the earlier classes because I know it opened in seventy two. Right. Yeah, I think I was about the second or third cohort, month, something like that. Mm. And how long was it that you had to attend the college at that time? It was two years i think it was yeah two years and one year internship something like that mm -hmm. and and when you when you graduated how much were you paid wow that i cannot remember <laughs> well, let me ask you this when you went to school in the 1950s you said mr christian at that time was the principal yes and uh, how would well, you dress? no when when i went to school no mr he was no he was he had already he had just left Lang Plain. When I went, when I started teaching, it was Mr. Bernard John Baptist, who was the principal. I see. And yeah. did you have a uniform? No. The, only, the uniform came about when we had a new school. At the beginning of the new school, that's when we initiated a, a uniform. And in those days, did you have shoes to go to school? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the majority of the people in La Plain earned their money from the banana industry? Yes. And did was there much fishing or no? Who's that? Was there much fishing in the village? Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So what would you have for breakfast in the morning going to school? <laughs> in the morning, it sometimes it's bread. Sometimes bread and maybe bread and codfish, or bread and sardines, you know, or bread and uh, fish from the following eve night, you know. Mm. Or it could be with, with a nice cup of cocoa tea. <laughs> and that cocoa tea, most times the milk was when it was coconut milk. So that was really good stuff. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And um, some, uh, and sometimes it was ground provisions too. When it was bread, 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 bread fruit season, mm. you have your breakfast, no bread. You have a piece of yeah. roasted breadfruit or warmed breadfruit. Yes. If it was dashing time, you have you have dashing in the morning. It was a dashing and bananas, so we on or cocoi, plantain. Yes. <laughs> we did a lot of organic eating. We were not did aware. You, yeah, did you all have a lot of like say lettuce and watercress and carrots in those days? Yes, we our parents would have the stand and they would they would plant the lettuce above ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about for lunch? What would you have for lunch? Ground provisions, ground provisions and fish, ground provisions and chicken, ground provisions and meat. Mm. And the chicken you grew yourself in your yard? Yes. Mm. Were there, were there, were there, was there much use of eggs? Yes, we, we got eggs from our chicken. Mm -hmm. So you're saying it was the tradition in those days that almost every family had its own garden? Yes, oh yes, every family has its own garden. Yes. And you That's also had animals? Yes, that's a must. Yeah. And we had rabbits, my brother. We had rabbit hutches, and the, my brothers would go get vine for the rabbits every day. And what kind of animals, apart from the rabbits and chickens, what else would you have? What other animals? Pigs. We had pigs also. And um, one or two sheep also, one or two goats also, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and would you all have uh, at Christmas time things like boudin and so on? We had, yes. In Christmas time, you have. Um, Black pudding. Black pudding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let me, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to your husband for a bit and then I'll come back to you. 
And then I will talk about your children and uh, that type of thing. So Mr. Alexander, you, you, when you left the grammar school, what did you do? Left grammar school, I worked at the, at, at, at the customs as a customs officer at the port, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, for a few years, just before I went to Cable campus, you know? Yeah. When did you go to Cable? What year? Cable was between 66, about 66. Yeah. How did you get there? You applied for a scholarship? Um, no. What happened? I was a civil servant at the time before I left, and the government had a policy whereby it give you a year's full pay and you no know, six months full pay, and they have pay but, and leave. They first study leave. I want to study leave, right? Six months full pay, and they have pay, and then my parents pay the rest. Your parents are still alive. Yeah, 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 and they paid the rest. Were they still working or were they retired? Huh? Yeah. Were they still working? working. I see. Hmm. So how long were you at UE? Well, four years, four or five years, you know. And you did a bachelor's in chemistry? Maths, chemistry, physics. Maths, chemistry, physics. Yeah. And at that time, the Barbadian prim prime minister was Errol Barrow? Yes, at at Errol Barrow, yes, that's right. Errol Barrow was there. What kind of uh, prime minister was he? How did you uh, well, how did you find him? Well, um, Barrow was very very um strong on education. He felt as if he was education, and he wanted to see Barbados having their own university, okay, yes. own branch, and um, you know that was his um his his idea of progress. As having far as yeah. As far as the University of West Indies, was the Barbadian branch number two or was Trinidad number two, St. Augustine? Okay. Um, Mona was first. Yes. Yeah. St. Augustine second and Barbados third. Okay. Um, um, St. Augustine came about because before had what is called the Imperial College of something from Britain, Agricultural College of Britain. The Imperial College of Tropical Agriculture, ICTA. Right. You're right. That was in Trinidad. And then then it, it was enlarged into much more, you know, after that. And then even after the third well, Kevin was after. What Kevin was famous for, they began the law faculty there. Okay? And then of course natural sciences. Outstanding. What did you how did you compare life in Barbados compared to that in Omega? Okay. In Barbados, for example, Barbados had the world's highest literacy index. Everybody in Barbados record. That was the Guinness rule of record. Barbados has the world's most literate country. No, in Barbados, everybody had what is called the Barbados advocate in the back pocket going to work. The work Barbados, Barbados were well informed about everything. And they could read and write. So the politics was one of intellect. And in Barbados, I found the, the whole environment was intellectually established, you know, high level. No gossip, facts. The people put them there. You don't argue, the guy go on his bicycle, he get his advocate, and he show you the facts. And when you say the Barbados advocate, you're talking about the Barbados national newspaper. That's correct. Yeah, That's correct. Right. Okay. Because they carried it in Dominica too. Yeah. yeah. We, 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 we could get it. We could get it at a place called CB's bookstore. Oh, I know, yeah, I know CB. Yeah. 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 There was the uh, they didn't have the Jamaica Gleaner, but they had the Barbados Advocate, mm -hmm. Time Magazine, Music Magazine, the Trinidad Express, and the Trinidad Guardian. Okay. You know, they would have those uh, newspapers there. Um yeah. so, so when when you be get back to, to the grammar school for a while. Uh, were you a cadet at the grammar school? Yes, as a cadet. <laughs> Goodrich was the principal there at the time, and man, he was rough. <laughs> and was Goodrich a Barbadian or Jamaican? Yeah, Barbadian, Cecil Goodrich. Eventually, he became um, a, a president of a college in Jamaica. I see. He died. Yeah. He became the president of a college in Jamaica. Yes. Where did Goodrich study? Do you know? 
Where did he study? Do you know? He did. He, I think he went to Edinburgh University, I believe so. Edinburgh in England? Yeah. yeah. And he came back. I don't know where he got a PhD from, but I think he went to Edinburgh. Hmm. So, so you're saying that he was a cadet commandant? Yes. Yeah. Tell us about and, the cadet um, corps in those days. And he said, when he said, jump how high, you know? <laughs> well, we used to go go to Montbrush, through the gardens, up the hill, you know? Yes. And they would fall along. So you better get up and run. And I see guys stumble and fall along on yes. 39 steps. Yes. <laughs> Gordon had no sympathy at all. Yes. <laughs> <They're> ruthless. <laughs> yes. He said, yes. war is a ruthless phenomenon. Yeah. You got to, got to survive. <laughs> so, so Goodrich said that war is a ruthless phenomenon. You have yeah. to have the guts to survive. Yes. <laughs> and you well, and you had the old 303 Lee Enfield rifles. Yes, 303 Lee Enfield Springfield rifle, man. And, and you had to carry that with blanks, eh? Yes. No, on National Day, we had to join the police force with blanks, too, you know? Yes. Our, our regiment was there, uh, yeah, and so on. Yeah. So in those days, someone told me that in those days, almost every grammar school student had to be a cadet. Is that true? I, I'm not sure, you know. Unless you had, to me, everybody wanted to be, unless you had a good excuse, you know. Yes, yes. And and what was the uniform wear? How was it? What was the uniform wear? It was khaki, a khaki outfit, if a, a beret. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, not a beret, you know the old hat, the Australian type hat. Oh yes, like the Australian, the Australian bush hat. Yes, that's what you had to use. Yes. Who were the cadets? Who were the famous cadets of that time with you? Major Earl Johnson was one who eventually became the guy in charge. You know? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what about uh, Michael Garraway? Yes, Michael was there. Remember, Michael, by the way, who was again? Um, this guy who died. Um, um guy called Neville Walsh. Right, Neville Owens. Um, this guy um is a lawyer. Um, so Simon Richard. Richards. Francis. Yeah, Eustace Francis was one too. Eustace Francis. Yeah. yeah. It was a, a, a rough cadet too, man. Eustace. <laughs> 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 and he, he was in the guy, you know. Yeah. What about what about people like uh, Clayton Shillingford and Dave Shillingford? Were they there? You were correct. I think Clayton was. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure, you know. If Clayton was one, I can't remember all the was guys. Was Clayton you know? ahead of you? Was Clayton ahead of you? Yeah, Clayton was two years ahead of me. Okay. Yeah. What Clayton, about Dave? Dave and I were in the same class. Amazing. Um, those days, Liverpool, the big guys, Gamble School were Clayton Schillingford, Liverpool, Michael Garroway, and these guys, you know, these big boys. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Were you there with uh people like um Sidney Jones? Sidney Jones was there what year a year or so ahead of me. I from see. That's right. Yeah. That's right. He's the um uncle of Fraser Jones. Yeah. Fraser I thought Fraser. Indeed. So you came back from um UE in what year? I came back here in seventy one and I was made radio teacher at grammar school at that time. I taught maths, chemistry, physics. Then in 73, 74, I was deputy principal. And then I was, I was principal in 74, 77. So in 71, when you came, the principal was J.K. Goff, the Englishman. Who? Mr. Goff. Yeah, that was you. Tell me about Goff and his tenure. <laughs> Goff was the principal of grammar school. He's in physics. He, he's a god in physics, okay? Yes. You know, A-level physics. <coughs> Sorry. And um, I took over from him, you know? I see. <laughs> and then, um, was it the tradition in those days to have an Englishman as the principal of the grammar school? It, it wasn't a tradition. But sometimes, you know, if there's no... The, the British Development Division paid the salary for these guys, you know? It's cheaper to have them, you know what I'm saying? So who paid the salaries? Who paid the salaries? The British Development Division. Oh, I see. So the salaries are not being paid by the local government? Yeah, I don't think so. 
Okay. And I don't know if David Lewis came from England. They were paid by the British Development <coughs> Division for the Caribbean. In fact, in 1971, the British, De British Development Division built the technical college in, in the region. Okay? And the British and all the salaries were paid also by the British, by the British government and the housing and everything. So you're saying that the college that was built, the Clifton Dupini Technical College at uh, Bellevue Royal, was built by the British Development Division. Yes, in England, and it and the the the, the um the British, the British government paid the salaries and everything for the staff. Because I remember when I was a child, they would be going up the road. They were all English people. Yes, and they yes. had houses. They had houses at the back where they yes. lived. Yes. I lived in one after they left. I lived in one of them on campus. I see. I see. As a principal. Tell us a little bit about the Clifton Dupini Technical College and what purpose it was supposed to serve. The, 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 the college was supposed to serve um, training people for skills in, in building construction, electrical skills, um, plumbing, and so on. And um, at that college, we did a lot. To help the society. Now, there's a turning point there. After Hurricane David in 79, we had to use the college, what is called reconstruction effort, right? So, Arlington Rivier was then the OS guy from Domin from in Dominica. And he met with, we sat together and discussed that we need to use the college to have a um, skills training program. The OS agreed to do that, right? And when you say OAS, you mean the Organization of American States? Yes. So I was made what is called um, a resource officer, a special projects officer in that system, right? I had been special officer for the government of Dominica on special development assistance projects, which took place immediately with the disaster. I worked and implemented and managed and evaluated projects for OS, United States Agency for International Development, Pan American Development Foundation, Inter American Foundation, Canadian International Development Agency, International Labor Organization, United Nations Educational, Cultural, and Scientific Organization. All these corporations. I did projects for them with the tech college in many Amazing. areas. Amazing. And and I back, and what people did not, do not know, when I came back to uh, the college, I recognized the college to do the city and girls um, examinations. And our college was the best in the region results. Amazing. And that's not interrupted. Only one guy knows that is, is here, Roy Thomas. Tech college was the best in the region. And then I, I, I put in the CXC exam, which it passed. Guys passed the HNC, ONC, and so on. Definitely. Yeah. Well, you've been a phenomenal educator. I mean, how, how do you believe um, your education in Barbados at uh, mathematics, physics, chemistry helped improve the output of science students at the grammar school and at the technical college? Well, first of all, um, I became very knowledgeable in the type of curriculum we should have, textbooks we should use. And I used some of the textbooks from Kerrville at HCC and in Dominica at the level. Because when I taught E-Level 2, I used the same book to use for my degree. And uh, at the technical college, I taught additional mathematics so the guys could understand and get up to the level of mathematics. I made sure that mathematics was important. I tell them that mathematics, you will not understand almost any science at all. So you're saying that mathematics is a root science? Root science. Yes. I tell them no matter what you go and do, you must have mathematics for statistics to understand. Even medicine, you have to do it. Yes. And they, they, they saw that I wasn't playing. Yes, indeed. Let me ask you this question, Mr. Alexander. How important do you think is mastery of, math of mathematics in the, in the future success of a small island developing state like Dominica? 
Okay. First of all, um, nowadays, you no longer have textbooks. You have online teaching. And um, we have to change our, our, our mode of teaching. In other words, um, she doesn't know this. We sell phones. They're not motivated by textbooks. <coughs> and most of the books are now out of print. So what you have to do is to subsidize the actual um, online courses, material that we can get on our own and have the students. They don't know how to get it. We know how to get it. For example, I know we have to get all the old textbooks which are still there. I should use them, but I, I, I modify my, my approach. I take parts of them to explain a fishing online. Yeah. So you need a combination of both, but all. I believe do not throw away all the old textbooks at all. Have them there and use them as a reference. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. At some point in time, the Dutch government based on your success at the college, uh, offered you an opportunity to work in the Dutch territory of St. Martin. Is that correct? Yes. When was that? Okay. Um, the thing is, um, in 1984-87, um, I went to St. Martin. There are few businessmen on the island. And uh, they said that the children will not go to school in Holland. They moved to the US or Britain or the British Caribbean. So they want to do away with the Dutch education and have either American or English based education because the children will be going to these areas, not to Holland. Okay? So they decide to set up a school doll, a school a small school set up called the Foundation for Technical and Vocational in Education in the Madden. Good. So they had to turn the school into a British or American um, type of school. So you just a principal who had experience to do that kind of thing. And that, now I was a member of the CXC for Dominica. In fact, I signed the only agreement in 1980. I served Edward Robinson and Oliver Harris for the CXC existence. existence. I signed it in Ghana. Okay. And you that's Belgrave, Robinson, and Olive Harris. Yes, we free our same agreement, signatories for with Mr. Christian, I think, for the actual establishment of the CXC. And I was in CXC for that time for many years. So that's why the Dutch government in St. Martin knew me, knew of me, right? And they asked me to come and, and help. So they called me on the telephone and told me, well, look, man, we need a principal. Now, I remember the Lions Club. So one of the guys called me, say, man, we heard about you. Um, we need to, um, you know, need help there. So I gave an advertisement to I saw. So I went there, and I came, and yeah, he spoke to me, and they discussed. I made an application on an, on an application on the telephone interview, and he said, come. So I went upstairs, I went there, and I began the school. And I, you know, tried my best. I hired students, you no, know, I hired staff from Barbados, Jamaica, Trinidad, and um uh, and the other islands who had CX experience, okay? And they came in and we did a good job. Not me, but all of us together. In fact, when I left, after three years, after I left for the United States, we had 90% passes in CXC. Amazing. And what was the name of that school in St. In Martin? The Foundation for Vocational and Technical Education. Amazing. Yeah, FAPT. Yes. It's still there today. It's, it's now changed. The name is changed to the St. Martin Academy. Um, I changed the name. <laughs> okay. Now we're gonna go, we're gonna talk about the uh uh we're gonna talk about the US in a little bit, but um before you do that, let me ask you, you went through a time at the grammar school when the whole 
issue of Rastafarianism and black power and those things coming about. How did you address that? And how did you see that those changes? How did you view those changes? Okay, these changes, I, first of all, um, I was very, very cautious the whole movement. Because at, at one time, I can remember, at the grammar school, we had some rifles study at the back of my office, I can remember. And someone broke open to the whole community and took the rifles away. So I reported the matter. Hold on. So, 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 so for those who will uh, be hearing this, they need to know that during those days, the grammar school is the only island and only, only school on the island with its own armory and it had its own range at the back. There's a rifle range, is that correct? No, we didn't have, we didn't, yeah, we had a range at the back and we kept some rifles there, you know, inside. You, 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 kept, you kept the two, two target rifles there and yeah. the Lee and Field rifles still at the police headquarters. Yes. But you had about a half a dozen, if I remember, because I used them, about half a dozen, two, two rifles in the principal's office. That's correct, because Mr. Grell then was the guy, Gerald Grell, was the guy who, you know? So I can one time, when they broke up with the 20 rifles, we decided uh, this guy had to go in the bush. It, so oh, you're rifles, saying to me that the rifles were stolen? Yes, we never got them back. I so didn't know that. Said, huh? I did not know that. Yeah, I know that, I know that. Never got them back. The rifles stole and- They stole we, all, we, they stole, you're saying to me that they stole all the rifles? They stole all we had there. We didn't have many, but we had a few. You had about half a dozen. About that, roughly. He told Because it was just for target practice on Thursday afternoons. That's all it was for. Yeah. yeah. People said that this has to be in the bush. You know? I came up very well because I came up very well. Pesciana, came up Pesciana. Of course, Jean, 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 Jean Pesciana. Boy, Mark, this thing has to be in the bush. He said, these things have to be in the bush. I'm a patient, you know. So they yeah. never found they never found them. Never found them. I see. And that was the time that guys wanted to come into the school with tams and dreadlocks. What was your view on huh? what was your view on those things? I didn't like the idea of the dreadlocks. It didn't look I didn't look like that's too imitated Bob Marley just like that. I said that I didn't like because once you have dreadlocks, it meant that you were at Safari. You are rebellious. You know that what the Rasta FRI did was because you threaten people, you know, in the gardens, Saturday morning, threaten them. I didn't look, have a very good impression, of, you know, yes. that we should um, have students coming like that. Society fine, but as a student, you couldn't come and spread that kind of culture among people. You thought it was, you thought it was damaging to the esprit de corps and the discipline of the school. Yes, it was. And was that the reason that the, the police there, what was his name, Richards, um, police officer Richards was posted on the compound. I remember he arrested Randy Shillingford. Do you remember that? Randy? Yes. I can't remember at all. I can't yes. remember. Randy was arrested because uh, he was posted on the compound to make sure that nobody came on the school compound smoking marijuana. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then, of course, certain people wanted to wear red shoes and other colored shoes when grammar school was supposed to wear black shoes or brown shoes. Yeah, yeah, we actually brown shoes. <laughs> yes, brown yes. shoes and our khaki pants and so on, right? Yeah. What about the transition from the necktie to the shirt jack? What did you think about that? That was a good thing. In fact, um, Pops Pops Burnham had this idea that in the tropics, we should be wearing this coat and tie and so on. Mm -hmm. And then um, the president, our prime minister, the blonde said, he liked the idea. So perhaps we know how this thing done, we could on. It's very, very good because, you know, it can be very, very high, hard, hot sometimes. But, you know. When, you were, when you were at school yourself, did you wear the blazer and the tie? Yes. At school, we are, we wear the blazing tie is for ceremonial purposes. But we had the, the khaki shirt and the tie and the pants. But the blazer and bags was for ceremonies. Formal occasions, you know? Like a speech night. Yes. Yes, indeed. 
Let me ask you about your time at the grammar school. I mean, were you allowed to go to the movies or participate in carnival? Movies? I mean, did Archer allow you all to go to the movies or participate in carnival? My, I am not sure, you no. Know, but I think that there was a, a a feeling that as a grammar school boy, you should be out late at night, right? In my mind, I came I came an exact clause or definition. But I remember as a boy, I knew Mr. Archer's time, you couldn't be seen late at night, after midnight at night, on the road. Yes. Yeah, if anybody saw you, tell Mr. Archer, you order at midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And he couldn't tell you what you're doing outside that time. Amazing. So you're doing a deterrent. So you're saying that the society was a much more law-abiding and cohesive yes. society? Yes. What would you say to the young boys and girls of Dominica today? And what do you think was important in your success in academia? First of all, discipline. And um, first of all, focusing on God to guide you. Focusing on education. It's a theme of success for progress. Bacadal, carnival, and so on is for short, it is it, it's a, it's a passage. The Buddha passage. We put too much emphasis on carnival, too much bacchanal, too much dancing. We have too much long days of celebrations. And I believe the students should, in fact, I'll tell you something. One year, right, grammar school, during carnival time, I had classes in the lab in physics because we said physics is in chemistry, the A level is in June. So after Carnival is June, so a few guys, like I think my Dave, Mikey Bruni or Dave Bruni, and I, I, Michael Stephen, a few guys, uh, Douglas, a few guys came to me and I taught them physics during Carnival morning. I tell them in the afternoon, I think I'm going to jump up. They say, no, we're not jumping up, no. Can they call out that chemistry? I, and, and George Ripley, George Richards, I taught the physics. And we taught them in the lab during carnival morning for two days. Amazing. So you're saying to me, carnival Monday and Tuesday, when music is rocking the streets of Roseau. Yes. You had these guys in the physics lab. Yes. In the morning, teaching them, getting them ready for the A-levels. Yes. And how, 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 how successful did that cohort become? Almost everybody did very well. Very well. You know, it's interesting because um, I think maybe my brother Lawson was in that group, you know, because... Very likely. I, I remember during Carnival, he was not too keen. He was very studious and Carnival would be breaking down in town and be reading a book on physics. Yeah. One guy came a guy called Julius Corbett. But Corbett, Corbett was there, I can't remember. Corbett was there. I think Michael Stefan, Atty Douglas, Mikey Bruni and these guys. You know, they had... Yeah, these guys. I know that Corbett later became a lab officer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lawson became a civil engineer, he's a P in New York. Mm. Atlee Douglas became a science teacher and later a veterinary surgeon. Mm. Michael Asapan became an engineer. Yes. Mikey Bruni became a judge, I believe, mm. or magistrate. Dave I became a chemistry I, 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 teacher. Atlee Douglas guy. Atlee Douglas, can we Atlee? Atlee became a vet in New York. Okay, good. He's a veterinarian in New York, in New York, in Long Island. In the lab. Yes. So these guys were your were your pupils. Yeah. yeah. And you molded them with a strong hand. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. So I, I, I take away from what you're saying is that not only do we need a strong discipline, but also you said that carnival is just a passing phase that you need to focus on your, we have too much celebration, too much long holidays where we just celebrate and we do not put enough emphasis on the sciences. Is that your position? Yeah. My, 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 what I'm saying is this. You can have a carnival in celebration, but I'm not against that at all. But I'm saying the students must focus a lot on your education, okay? As a focus. You can, you can go the whole week if you want. But, but the point is that you must know that your, your mind, you, you must train your mind to think, 
and do hard work and study. When you mean that oil, man. What is it? What is what? What about reading? How what? Uh, how, how important in in, in your success was uh, the, the 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 focus on reading? Reading was not a problem at all. I never had difficulty reading, and I think um, reading is not really in Dominican context. Reading is not really the issue at all, because in Dominica I find that most students, those because in the elementary schools. You have a strong teaching background situation and reading. Because in the elementary school students do reading very, very well. So reading is not an issue in Dominica at all to me. It wasn't at the time. At the time. Never. I don't even know, but at the time, reading was never a problem. More mathematics probably was the problem. So how and much focus? How much focus do you think we should be having now on the sciences, you know, uh, math, physics, chemistry? A lot. Yeah. So you think it's time for us to have a chemistry society in Dominica? Yes. I think uh, um, Chilling Fed, Kate and Chilling Fed began something, right? Yes. Yeah. That could be uh, the, the impetus for, for, for expansion. Yes. Clayton Schillingford, right? Dave Schillingford, Sam Christian, Irvin Andre, uh, Raglan Riviere, they started uh, with my, of course, involvement as well, the Dominica Academy of Arts and Sciences. Yes. That should that should do that should be the umbrella which we which we'll work on, you know? Yes, indeed. And I look forward, you know, the we want to thank God for what you did. I mean, you were a very good teacher. I uh, want to record that uh, in 1976. I tried to lead the students out on a demonstration in support of one uh, doc, uh, one uh, brother, Egbert Germain, who had been uh, tear gassed in the river, demonstrating in favor of uh, Desmond Trotter, who was an SMA student who had been accused and convicted, tried and convicted for the killing of a tourist, John G. Rezek. And I, I uh, tried to lead the students out, and Mikey Bruni brought me to Alwyn Bully, because you're out of leave. Or study leave, and all Lynn Booty gave me a strong warning. I brought the students back to class. But when you got back, I was a deputy head boy and a prefect, and you thought that I'd let down the side, and I think you gave me five of, five of the best uh, with the tambourine whip. And <laughs> oh, boy. That's, that's the only time I think I got caned at the grammar school, you know? But it was for, it was for a good cause. It wasn't because I was breaking up things or anything. I was trying to get I guess into the politics of the day, and you thought that was damaging to the discipline of the school. And uh, you know, <laughs> shortly after that, uh, you know, uh, Michael Pascal and I won the national quiz competition. Banner de Four at uh, Radio Dominica presided over that, and one two weeks later, I won the national elocution contest on the issue of independence. Yeah. And I brought the trophy to the assembly, and you held my hand. You held up my hand with the trophy. So I guess I redeemed myself. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So those those are very good days. You know, any final words for your students? Because many of your students will see this, and uh, I want to, on behalf of all your students, thank you, sir, for very very uh, for your service in education. Uh, because I, I the, the students of your time did very well in the sciences, and uh, I'm hopeful that we can carry on from what you started. Before I go to Miss Alexander, any final word, word, uh, words to your students, many of whom will see this recording. Okay, I forgot to mention that when I came here, right, um, at HEC, I was teaching mathematics. And right now, you're, you're right now you're in Tampa, Florida. Yes. And when you came to Florida, you also got into academics. Yes. And, or academia. Um, yes. yes. I taught mathematics on three of the campuses of the Hilbert Committee in the state, state University System a College. And during my time I taught, I found that many students could pass in America, mm -hmm. even in English. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, in English. But in mathematics, there was a high level of attrition. I'm saying, how is it that people are getting high school diploma here? Graduate high school diploma here. Um, 
come to do the entry test and fail the college level test. So I did some more research and I decided, look man, we have help the students. So I decided to write a grant, the Caribbean Association, to have what is called tutorial math program, help them. Now, I work to University of South Florida and, and they partnered with me and they said, that's a good idea. They give me the buildings free. So I had this program going on, which helped up to now for 20 years. Where I help students who are failing to pass the SAT, ACT exams, and do bachelor's, master's, something called the PhDs. Amazing. So that's one for the cracks, okay? That's so one kind of thing I'm, doing, I'm proud of. When and you still going on. My wife is still teaching that. Saturday morning, she's still there teaching them from 8 in the morning to 1 o'clock. We cut her from grade 6 to no, no, grade, grade, grade 3 to grade 12. To grade 12. Okay? So your wife is also a mathematician? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll be talking to her in a moment. She has a bachelor's in math or master's? No, no, I, I just teach my, I like, it's a subject I like, so I teach it at elementary level, not at high school. <laughs> okay, very good, very good, very good. I remember I told you, I didn't, I didn't even go to high school. <laughs> yeah, but you went to college, you went to the teacher's college. Yes, I went to teacher's college, and, and afterwards we migrated to St. Martin, there I did a few teacher's courses courses pertaining to teachers because the University of Miami, I think they used to fly down the once a month to give classes. So I did that. And then we relocated to Tampa. And interestingly, when did you we, go to five or eighty four? Beg your pardon? When did you go to Florida? When did you leave the Caribbean? We live in um about eighty seven. We the uh, Martin when we reach here, but it's here about um here in uh about 80, 81, 82, 87. Yes, 87. So I couldn't teach here, although I liked teaching. So a fellow Dominican told me that I could challenge the exam. That is the Florida teacher's exam. So I said, Well, what do I study? But he himself did not know. So I told Alex, well. I'll just go and challenge the exam and see what it is, and then I'll take it again. At least it will give me an idea of what to study. Well, at the time, I think it was just $50 to register for the exam. So I did that. This exam had three parts. It was, um, no, two parts. One was the academic part, which, which you tested in English, reading, and math. And the other one was for um, methods of teaching, just teaching. So we, I sat that exam at the University of South Florida. In the morning, when they gave me the math, I told myself, oops, I passed the math. Mm. When they gave me the English, I said, oops, I passed the English. <laughs> so at lunchtime, I saw so many people. So I'm telling somebody, I cannot understand. How come there are so many people? She said some of the people came to sit the other part of the exam. Now, we were not used to that in Dominica. If you fail, you fail, you know? So, honestly, I got a little scared because I say, oh, my God. If these people know their system of education and they fail, who am I to come and pass? But anyway, I told myself, come on, Esther, go for it. You'll... Well, it's interesting to note when I saw the questions, I was trained in Dominica 13 years ago. And after 13 years, and I sat the exam, I could just see these things. Mrs. Harris who was our principal, may her soul rest in peace, and Mrs. Shaw, and um, what's her name now? The lady who just died. Um, Majo. 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 Joseph. Joseph, Joseph. I could just see and hear them teaching us the thing, the terms, you know? So when I came home, I told Alex, well, we ha you have to wait for it. It's not now you get the, the, the test, the, right, the, you don't get the result right away at the time. When I came, I told him, I think I passed it. He said, yeah, I said, I think so, because 
the questions I saw, I knew most of them. It's only two of them I did not know. I guessed it, you know, because I just didn't know. It had to do with testing hair. So said, so done. When the exam, came, when the results came, I passed all three sections. Outstanding. Just, just with the knowledge I had from Dominica. So I, I have great, great respect for my, for my Dominica education. Oh, you know? same here. So you're I talking have, about people I know. I never got taught by Olive Brand. I think she was Brand and later became Olive Harris. Right. But I knew her before she passed. She was married to Errol Harris, who was right. in the culture. If you're talking about, you don't want Frances Harris? No, no, no. Um, Olive Harris. Olive Harris, okay. Olive Harris. And then Josephine Joseph. Never taught me, but she was principal for a while when I was the grammar school. Yeah, she taught, she taught us a little. She, I think, she taught reading or whatever it is, methods of reading or something okay. at the at the college. Mm -hmm. You mentioned another name. Oh, Mrs. Shaw. Um, yeah, that is Dora, at, what's her name? Adora. Adora Shaw. Oh, her husband became the president of Dominic at one point. I think so. Yes. Mm. Yeah, she was a very very good teacher. She passed recently, I believe. Yes, she did. Mm -hmm. She was one of those legendary teachers. So I believe, you honestly, to be honest with you, Dominican students of our generation were very, very favored because we had some outstanding teachers, world class teachers. Yes, that's true. And that is that is made manifest. Uh, the quality, the quality of the teachers has been manifest in that. So many of your students, like myself, have gone on to do well. You know, in other schools, like yourself and like Mister. Why do you believe the quality of education in Dominica is so high? Because I think we've studied the British system of education. I, you know, very thorough. Yes, indeed. And at the time we didn't have so many things to distract us. The children know they have so many other things to distract them. So they're not you know, focused on learning as we did. Indeed. And let, let, let me ask you, you know, you've been around, you've been in the education system in Dominica, you've been in the education system in the United States. If you can give us any comments on some do's and don'ts, so some of the value engineering you thought made for your success. With, with um, based on reading, I find here, they put a little too much emphasis on reading in the sense that when we, in Dominica, when we sat our exams, we had one passage and that passage, you did the comprehension in it you did the vocabulary. You all, and then you you had to um praise it. You had to summarize it. Here, even at third grade, they will give the children five and six passages to read hurriedly. You answer six questions. Um, you read the passage, six questions. To me, you don't have to give a child so much reading to test their knowledge, to test whether they can understand what they read. You know. I don't expect it to be as maybe just as we had one or two, but they could bring it down instead of six passages or eight passages, give them half of that, you know? So some of the children are intimidated by all that reading. How do you think we can improve math education on Dominica? Well, again, I do not know if there is a need for it. Is there a need for math education? That's I don't know how well we are doing. Oh, well, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not speaking from any perspective that there's a lack of. But you know, one can always improve. So you can maybe tell us what are the what are the methodologies that you utilize in teaching math education to make it easier. I know that I had a problem with math. Among all our brothers, I was the one with the problem with math. But I solved it later on by a teacher at college who was very very methodical and would guide you and give you extra lessons and so on. So what would you say would be useful for any well, teacher listening? Well, te technology is. Is, is the thing of the day. And there are many websites that could be utilized. So much so um, during COVID, the, our association, the Dominica, not the Dominica, the CCA, the Caribbean Association, before COVID, we used to go to a building to tutor the children every Saturday. That is the math class Alex was yes, talking yes, about. Yes, yes. And at USA. However, during COVID, we couldn't do it. So we resorted to do it online. Then the thought came to me, I said, well, if we can do it online, maybe we can utilize, we can do that in Dominica also. So I discussed it with the association and we were trying to put a little project together as uh, just a tryout to see how 
well it would work because the children had computers from Dominica, they were given computers. But honestly, long and short, it didn't work because they didn't follow through, you know? We wanted to use La Plain, the Eastern District as a target. We have, there is a, a educational website called IXL and we were going to utilize that program, but um, it didn't work. They, they, they took a long time to respond. When they did respond, we tried to get some volunteers. We wanted volunteers to start. And having started, we would see if we could get a grant so we could give them a stipend and probably get computers to give, but it didn't work. They, they, they didn't respond. They, they said they would, but they did not respond favorably at all. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Let me ask you, how many children do you and Mr. Alexander have together? Four. Mm -hmm. Can you give me their names and what they did? Oh, yes. We have the first, our first daughter. She's 46. She's 45, Norisa Alexander. She's into social services. Okay. So, Marisa, M A R I S S. N N O R R I S A. Oh, Norisa, okay. And she's a sociologist, a social worker. What social you worker. And we have, Brent, we have Brenton Alexander. He's into computers, he's into networking. Okay. We have my daughter, and, and my middle daughter, Chanel Alexander. Okay. She's not working at the time. She has a she has a special needs child, so she's home with him. Mm -hmm. And the last one? Shaniska. Mm -hmm. What does Shaniska do? She's just starting a new job, you know. She was into um she was working as a hospital. not hospital, how do you call it? Registering students at um for for uh for health university, but she's going into something else. Outstanding. And you are both members of the Dominica Tampa Association. Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, that association helps different communities in Dominica. Give us an example of some of your work. Yes, what we do, we, um, we have supplied books to many of the schools. And and the president and um, we have sent um, supplies like wheelchairs to um, different individuals in Dominica. Very good. Things so like you have a very strong community with people like Doreen Shillingford Paul. Yeah, Doreen is the Doreen is the second is the president. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. How important yeah. do you believe are those Dominica associations in the diaspora? Beg your pardon. How important are such Dominica associations? in way of community development and keeping a sort of family relationship among all people? I, I personally think it's very, it's important, you know, because um, you get to know each other, you get to help each other. Even, even in Tampa, we have a few people whom we have helped. There is a ca case in point, there is a, a woman who reached out to us and she needed help. And when we interviewed her and asked questions, we realized, she needed help in just passing the exam to be a CNA. Mm -hmm. But it was during COVID that we couldn't, we could not um, meet her face to face. So we asked her to buy, purchase a book, and the association purchased the book. And we, I tutored her um, online. She would okay. study, the, she would study the, the the lesson, come to me if she needs any question, explain anything, explain. I would explain to her, and she she ended up passing the exam, and she's passing the CNA and she's working. So she's very grateful for that. Here we have given a few people wheelchairs. Yep. So this is wonderful. So you've used your facility in math and English and just education in general to even help Dominicans get yes. better jobs and those kinds of things. That's wonderful. That's commendable. And the, 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 the association, one of our highlights is to offer scholarships to um, students um, of of Dominican parentage, not only in Tampa or any any um, American university, we cannot do it on the, a, a large scale as we would like to. But we give about two or three scholarships per year. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is outstanding. This is outstanding. Well, I'm part of Rebuild Dominica, which is a U.S. nonprofit that was set up in 2015 to help after Erica, and we okay. went up then and after. Uh, Maria, so we can maybe cooperate with you, but I like the part about your 
using your knowledge, you know, to share with, with the community. That's really commendable. And I, I'm hope for those persons who will see this, that uh, in wherever they may be in England, Canada, uh, other parts of the United States, they may take example that two of our seniors who uh, did much in our island home to advance the cause of education are still at it. You're still at, you're still at, you're still on duty, you know. Yes. And that's 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 wonderful. And I've got to really bless you as we wrap this evening. I will ask you first, and then I'll go back to our whole principle. Any any um, final words about uh, what you'd like to see done in Dominica or in our overseas communities in way of improving the quality of life and having a better country and having a better community overseas? Any final words? On with regards to education, I would really like to see a few of us here come get together to have a tutorial program for Dominica for Dominican students online. You know. On a Saturday morning, we could have volunteers in Dominica as well as in the diaspora to help our oh. students. That's and um, so like a Saturday academy from yes. 8 30 to 12 30. Right. Um Hilroy Thomas and I we started discussing it, and I haven't heard from him. I don't know if he's not well. You know, do you know Hill Dr. Hilroy Thomas? I have his book somewhere here. Okay, good. You, so he we went, have, I think he's the first Dominican I know who went to. Harvard University. Okay, so we we discussed it briefly and we were to get back to with him, but Alice is trying to get in touch with him. We have not been able to, so. I will see if I have his number, but I, he produced a book um, for students and how to get into US universities. I bought a couple and I distributed them. Oh, that's more than 20 years ago. But oh, I knew boy. Gilroy when I was at the grammar school. Okay. Okay. During the independence movement. Yeah. And another thing I would like to see, I don't know how to go about it, but I would really like to see our Dominic, our dashing and our banana and our plantain being sold in the US. I mean, that would be a good livelihood for our Dominican folks, you know? I agree. Um, there's a Dominican pilot called Frankie Tong, Jefferson Tong out in the Virgin Islands. He brings up produced by plane. He also brings them up by boat on containers. But um, farming needs to be um, revitalized in Dominica because it's gone down some. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I do agree with you. And um, I can show you uh, what uh, years ago I did. I'll be right back. OK. I didn't know it was just a two of us. Hmm? There was a time, there was a time that I, uh, I have this here. There's a time that I, I I got Bello products to sell in the stores here. Wow. This is, this is the grapefruit marmalade from Bello. Oh. This is the uh this is the beer rum from Bello. Wow, that's interesting. Go go nectar from Bello. Mm. I have a bunch of other things over there, pepper sauce and jam and guava jam and these things. But, but uh, Bello, as you know, is gone out of business. Right. Um, you know, as a young lawyer more than 20 years ago, we would bring up some of these products to sell in the Caribbean stores here. Oh, okay. So, so when you said when you said that uh, it's something I've done, you know, mm -hmm. we also um did this also. So something like eh, eh. Okay. We went to Dominica and harvested cocoa and made a chocolate bar. Wow. That did a Dominique. Ah. So I'll try this if I can get a sample and send you. We still have some. But, you know, so we've tried our best to push, you know, Dominica. This chocolate bar is to make cocoa tea or to eat? Or to, no, this, or, is or, this is dark chocolate to eat. Oh, dark. Do you have the, you have the one to make the cocoa tea? Well, yes, we have the cocoa sticks we bought in the past, you know, oh. as we used to have in Dominica. But oh. I mean, I didn't make that. Uh, that. That's what the vendors would make. But this was something we we harvested the cocoa in Dominica and we pro processed it in Maryland with a company called Spag and Vola. Wow! Because the cost of it, the cost of energy in Dominica makes it very um, expensive to process because electricity right. rates are high in Dominica. To process cocoa into liquor, it takes about seventy-two hours of constant milling. And um, you know, it's the price per kilowatt hour in Normandy is about 44 cents. Here it's about 11 cents. So the differential is, is huge. Right. You know, so cost of production in Omnica will only go down when we increase 
a use of you know renewable energy like hydropower and wave power and wind power because the diesel that is imported you know it's very expensive okay yeah. yes indeed but i just want to say that uh, it's been a pleasure uh, to to speak with you and uh, you know uh, and and uh, my old principal and um any final words for our beloved people well um I love my fellow Dominicans. I love. I am a. I am a Dominican to the bone. I can and see I, that. I can see that. I'm I very wish, proud I of wish, that. I wish the best for my country and my people. Of course, of course, we all have to. And we all. I look. I was supposed to call Doreen today, but um, I, I had to work and I had to take him this interview. So I maybe call her tomorrow. But okay. I'm sure one day I will do an interview with her. But I just want to say, God bless both of you. It's wonderful. Uh, you know, we didn't get to talk a lot about the 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 uh, time that you spent in in La Plaine, but you gave me enough to to indicate to me that La Plaine was a very dynamic and uh, you know productive uh, it was. community, it was. very cohesive. Yeah, La Plaine produced some greats like yourself, of course, and Mr. <laughs> Alexander. Yes, uh, I'll ask you for one final word, and then I'll, I'll close up with him. Anything, okay. uh, any message to all people at home and abroad, and then I'll go to Miss Alexander. Well, my people, keep up the faith, vote wisely so that we can have the government that we deserve, you know, and all the best. <laughs> right. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Well, it's a pleasure talking to you, then you're my, my life, so to speak. Yes, indeed. Um, it's unfortunate some, some guys got killed in my regime. Oh, well, it's okay, man. I listen. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh, you know you ran a you ran a tight ship, and I'm happy that you did because uh, look at me now. Yes, um, this was the no nonsense regime, you know. Oh, I mean, you yeah. had. I think did you not have a blue Volkswagen? It has. It has. You know, it has a a um, Toyota yellow submarine. Call it. Oh, the yellow, yellow submarine. That's right. The yellow submarine. Yeah, but uh, you you were very dynamic and very energetic. You know, you you walked like a cadet. You know, you didn't you didn't walk stroll. You know, you walked. You know, very like yeah. you were drilling. You're, you're very fast. The most, you know, the most robust campus, robust president on campus. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I enjoyed the interview. You know, and um, oh, 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 philosophy here is to help as Dominic as much as possible. Yes, sir. Help students get scholarships and help them. Help them have the country. Yes, sir. Everybody where you come from, who you are, we believe that we have Dominica's ta talent, man. Talent. Indeed. Indeed. In fact, the elementary schools in Dominica are good. Very yes, good. Sir. Yes, sir. In my wrong dear man, in English, oh. And all I can do to help Dominica will do that, right, regardless. I, I, too, I do agree. And uh, we, we are dedicated to that as well, we have actually, as I said, I brought uh, the president of the college, uh, Dr. Donald Peters and Ambassador yeah. Cuba Charles to this college here, the University yeah. of Maryland to do an MOU. Yeah. And they sent um, professors down to grammar school, home economic center to teach food preservation science. So we've done our little part to rebuild Dominica and they're you know, dynamic Dominicans who are trying to make sure that we have a better society at home and help our folks here. Any final words to your students and the other Dominicans as we sign off? Yeah. With what we have in Dominica, we can do a lot. I now must recap that I also taught at the extramural department, eh? Math yes, physics, 11, mathematics, 11. I taught there. So the, we have all this structure here which can help us develop right now. And if Dominicans think along those lines, have a great country, can move forward, okay? Thank you very much. I, I, those words uh, will resound. Uh, if Dominicans can sit down, unite, and study, we can have a good country. That's, a, I think, a very good place to, to, to end this. Yes. I will get you a copy of this. Um, and um, I will share, with your permission, I will share this to your other students online uh, so that they can hear your uh, value system and they can hear about how you made it. And... Um, uh, it was by dint of effort. Discipline is the word that you use. So thank you very much. Sir. Sure, man. Okay. Thank, you for, thank you for your service. 
Okay. All right. And we ask God's no, blessings no on you and the wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. We ask God's okay. blessings on you and uh, Miss Alexander for, for many, many more years of good health and happiness. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. You. And all, thank you for all you do. For that and we, we, we love you guys and we loved what you've done in Dominica as well as what you did right here in the States as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Bye bye. All right. All right.